after yeah the situation was still right. you know still had um know what I mean he incarcerated right now you know what I mean right so prior, right after the uh the, the beef died down and headshots fizzled out and you was talking about the business stuff this situation happened was still so give him the rundown right so so free school man that's a like that's a, that's a friend of mine good friend of mine it's not no rap shit all that's my guy that boy told me some real life shit. He was the first motherfucker to say, listen, bro, you pass a certain age, you're supposed to have a stack in your account. And shit like that, like still put me on grown man shit. And a nigga ain't too much older than me, you dig know what I'm saying? But free still. So what happened with still was he, as some of y'all might know, he, he booked for a, a homicide right now. When he was falsely accused of, let me put that in there, these are facts. Even the judge said it when he sentenced him. Y'all could pull the paper or a public record or whatever. But um, when he got booked, he was kids. Like I'm a young boy. Couldn't have been no more than 1920. So this like the MySpace, Facebook just popping, and we still buzzing. So I'm taking shit off of the internet, sending it to him. Not knowing that he resenting the music shit because he feel like it's a high profile case just because I'm an underground rapper and I'm known. But I don't know the shit. So I'm like, man, they still love you. They still ask about you. Such such things about you. But I wasn't talking to my friend. I wasn't hollering at my man. I wasn't seeing what was going on in his day-to-day -day life. Like, still never been booked. It's his first time being booked. You got sentenced to 15 to 30. You dig what I'm saying? So like, it's like, and I wasn't hollering at him. I wasn't compassionate enough. And my immature mind, my man coming home. Like, it wasn't nothing, bro. I knew the case. I knew the details. I was in the courtroom every fucking day. Every day of the trial, I was there. So you couldn't tell me I wasn't going home. So I was treating things as if he was coming home. You dig what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking to him regular, I'm still talking to him. And motherfuckers around me that he was talking to, that he was calling shit, they telling me, yo, still don't fuck with you. I'm like, huh? How you? This is somebody you met through, still wouldn't know you if it wasn't be for me. How you gonna tell me? You're like, man, he ain't fucking with you right now. So, make a long story short, short story even shorter. I wrote him, I'm like, man, what's, what's, what's going on? Like, I'm hearing you ain't fucking with me. And he broke it down to him. Let me tell you something, man. Write your folks, man. Write your folks, man. Write your folks, bro. Real shit. They book. Regardless of how they feel, let them feel how they feel because they in there and you not. So what he said to me was, I should have worked a fucking letter. He said, listen, bro, you got some family that you see that's your immediate family. You see them day to day. You got some family that come around when it's cookouts, birthdays, celebrations and shit like that. You is in my immediate circle. When I was only upstate road, you ain't come see me enough. Then he was writing me about music and shit like that, and I wasn't feeling this shit. And me being blind, like I said, thinking the nigga coming home, I wasn't paying no attention to the shit. I was treating the case like it was bullshit, and my man was rumbling for his life. You dig what I'm saying? So that was the immaturity in me, and he got the right to feel how he feel. I ain't really explain myself. I didn't have to. I just apologized to him. I took it in, like as a man, you know what I mean? And I let him know that he said some real shit. Like he said some real shit. And he also told me I became the family that only show up to the cookouts and shit like that. So like, that was some deep shit that touched me, but yeah, uh, it was the last time I talked to him. We had communication now, the relationship is better than what it's been, but it's a stand up dude, man, free that guy, man. Won't wish jail on nobody, but not, not a good motherfucker like that. And the thing about him too, that I don't wanna leave out, he knew how to help a motherfucker bid. I seen still get somebody through a bid. And, and I always told him that too. I'm like, man, listen, you are headed to this, if one of our folks get booked, you gonna have to teach me how to help these niggas. I don't know how to do that shit. And I watched him do it, and when he did it, I fumbled. So, you know, but we ain't, there's no resentment in that relationship. There's no, that's still my man, that's my guy. I love him, stand up guy, man. Like, I, motherfuckers go to, Rex is cool now. Motherfuckers go to jail and rap. You know what I mean? Y'all hang with him. That motherfucker held his own, you know what I mean? Still tall, it's my little guy. Uh, yeah. So yeah, you, 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 I know you mentioned like you had a couple deals on the table. You know I mean, y'all had a couple deals on the table, and you was telling me off camera that you had a couple deals yourself that you ain't take. Yeah. You know what I mean? So give them the rundown on that. Well, headshot as a unit. Well, I'm gonna go before that. My, my most infamous joint was I was 16. So around this time, the only motherfuckers was hot was like it was me, it was Lotto, Hattie was buzzing. I want to say Spinach might have been in the mix. And a nigga named Lil Grant, he passed away, rest in peace with Lil Grant. So, I'm in a, I'm in a bathroom, no, I'm in a, um, in a bedroom, I'm in a project, so I'm in a lovely company. My mom called me like, Magic, get the fuck up. I jump up, I'm thinking I did something. I'm like, huh, I come in the living room, I, there's niggas with meats, jabojis, and Reeboks on. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? They're like, you Magic Woldy? Woldy, what the fuck, I don't know that. That sound like, 
Yeah, man, we, 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 we heard about you. We think you hot. We want you to rap for baby. I'm like, oh, shit. So you're like, yeah, we got ride for you and everything. Listen, I'm in the projects, bro, 13th floor. My projects are contested. They know. They, every time I see them niggas, they're like, man, you broke motherfucking gas money to the projects. I go to the fucking porch. It's, bro, it's December, bro. It's Lambos and like two hummus outside. An excursion. My man Marzuka had an excursion. I'm like, what the fuck? So when I go downstairs, I see the shit. Make a long story short, this was right before the figures got with the uh with cash money. They was actually spitting for them too. We was signed, but the business wasn't right. Me and still rap for baby. It's like I want y'all. Period point blank. But dude can't be your manager. The, it was a chick. I forgot the chick named CJ or something like that. He like, she could be your manager, he could be your road manager. But and we was boy, we had like 40 grand there with my man Marzook, man. He was like our manager, so that's what the deal up. And my mom ain't wanna sign my waiver. When you young and um you're a minor, your mom has to sign, like she's your legal guardian, so she gotta sign for you to get on. Cause we was trying to go to New Orleans, still 18 at the time, I was 16. I was trying to roll, but I couldn't do no business because my mom was sign away and she wanted me to finish school. We had a couple joints on the table. I think 50 was going to do like a reality show with us and shit. Like on some Dan and making a band shit. Like not no battle shit, but Mike Knox set us down. And he like, man, look, 50 trying to fuck with y'all. Call him on the conference call and all that. We fuck that up, niggas. I ain't no group, and we ain't no group. I'm hotter than her. Fucked a lot of shit up as kids, man. So look out for yourself, man. Be more business minded and then reach back for your folks if I can say anything about that. But it seemed like we fell, like we was the only core niggas that didn't have deals. Niggas had drinks on the table, man. Real shit. Mm. And yeah, on more recent, you know what I mean? Once you start getting a little bit more back in your bag, because a couple years ago, I just want to bring this up because it definitely was a classic moment for me. A couple years ago, we had put a cipher together at Black and Nobel. Know what I mean? And you had came through that joint, yeah. and I mean it was a nice lineup, man. If I must say so myself, know what I mean it was it was a it was a nice little situation. You came and did your thing in that joint, yeah, know sure. what I mean. So tell tell people a little bit about that, like how because that was the first time a lot of niggas see you in a long wow. time. Wow. That's why I want you to speak on that, like. Show show reached out to me on some shit, and like he said, I wasn't doing music in a while. He just ran across me on the end of the like, yo, bro, you still doing your thing? I'm like, yeah, he's like, well, listen, I'm doing this this little cypher joint, little cypher joint, that shit was me and I'm like, I'm doing this little cypher joint, I want you to come through. And how you, how you did it was, how you did it was, you had like the South Philly niggas, so it was like K-Dot, K-Dot, Young Pool, and the niggas, right? and then it was like one of the, uh, whoever was buzzing at the time, you put somebody that was buzzing, and then the vets, all in one set. That shit was dope, man, I come down, I do my thing, and it was on TV, motherfuckers was calling like shit, that shit give you the hunger back. Now I am back, I will never take a break again, about to take my city over, time to make them hate again, time to separate the real from the fake again, and I call a shot before he, I will chase him, them. Mr. Orneem, I had it quaking then, interest in this shit, but that shit was dope. But I come through that joint like I come through anything else. Like my, my, my folks behind me, my guys with me, you know, we real so we we everybody traveled with the monsters, you dig know what I'm saying? But it wasn't even no need for that. It was all love and that's when I found like a, a, a new a new respect newfound respect for sure. You dig know what I'm saying? Cause I'm like he a TV guy, man. But to put something together like that with different personalities, with no drama, no bullshit. Like I came I came through on some shit, but then I was like, I'm comfortable. But yeah, that was dope. That gave me like a spark back. After that H call me, like, yo, we gotta do something. And that's where you see the back, the back coming in. And then I, I reach out to Hollow and Vodka, and that's where you see the Bart Mitzvah shit coming in. And that, yeah, all this shit on YouTube too, the views is crazy. <laughs> Still get my views, man. Real shit. So now moving up to speed, tell the people what you got going on today. Like, what's up with Magic, with Magic, though, you know what I mean? Well, I get, I get bored with this shit, man, because like the, the, the new hip hop shit, man, it's. It's crazy. It's crazy. We talk about Philadelphia hip hop history. Don't think we fell, cause niggas had deals on the table. It just fizzled through for only on, on ego type shit. Like motherfuckers think Phyllis though we got it. By my like, we don't need no help. We got it. Just standing third. But far as right now, man, I I still do my thing. Y'all probably seen the latest shit I did was I did a uh, bar mitzvah for John Me, Hollow Vodka, Greg G's, and, and, and Sia. And right before that, I did a back to back H. That's an instant classic too. Uh, we did we gonna make it instant classic. But I get bored with this shit, but as of right now, I feel as though the city ain't represented right. So me and my niggas, we gotta we got represent this shit right. I'm still here shopping, you know, but I got a core group of loyal motherfuckers around me that I feel as though I could get them some things, I could show them the way, and I could get back into it, man. The city ain't represented right. Meek sign. After that, what is it? 
Like I ain't, I ain't, I ain't feeling this shit, man. We Lil Uzi don't represent us. Like we spitters. Like take nothing from me, but it's real shit. We spitters. He's not a spitter. Like they don't represent our city. Like we gotta get back to bars, man. Yeah, like uh, I'm glad you start doing this series, man, cause it bring the light back and motherfuckers will pull up them old bars and then know who was getting busy and when niggas was. So yeah, music about to drop, man. I'm I'm just living life, I'm traveling. Y'all see my IG, make the shit look easy, though. It ain't easy. I put in the work. Real shit, my man. My man off camera. I told him I was gonna pop my shit, but yeah, I'm living life, traveling, taking care of my family. But I'm gonna get this shit one more, one more shot, man. My man told me not too many niggas get a second chance, bro. This shit falling in your lap, bro. The ball back in your hand. What you gonna do? Now I do something with it, bro. I miss that show money. I miss that show money. That walk through money. I need you to come to my daughter cookout. Got thirteen hundred for you. I'm like, what? So I get to eat. I get to eat, there's gonna be bitches there. I get to chill, and you gonna pay me? Like, I miss that shit, man. So it's time to get back to that, man. We was somebody's, man. And we was a core somebody when it comes to the city, man. We gotta get back to the bars and get back to the spit. And one more thing I wanna ask you. I mean, to speak on that, because you said we was somebody. Give me some insight on, like, how it, how it is to be somebody at one point, have people, not me, showing you love, not me, you pretty much having it your way. And then, not me, a couple years later, it ain't the same situation. You see some of the same people, it ain't the same love. A lot of people ain't reaching back that was all around before. So get people a little bit about that. Like, once that started happening, what was your thoughts? How, well, what was your mindset and all that? Like, how you feel about that? Well, I, you know, not to take nothing from these things, I just want to tell them how it is. Like, right, Philly just like Atlanta. When I come, when I say I don't want to say that to say this, like rappers is weirdos. You got some niggas that's thrill, some niggas that's real, some niggas that was somebody before rap. I was somebody before rap. I always rumble. I always got to a dollar. I always played ball. So once I start buzzing off, I always rap too. But once I start buzzing off of rap, my fans came from different core places in the city that I used to live, or that I might have played ball at, places I got money at. Motherfuckers knew what knew me for rumbling and shit like that. So. Motherfuckers was somebody before that, so I knew how to handle it because I used to hoop and I used to get busy. So if you the star basketball player, this shit like it's the same way. Motherfuckers ain't know how to handle it though, man. Like that shit, something it's a different animal. Like imagine going not the gallery. We used to shut the gallery there, but imagine going to King of Prussia as a kid. KOP is nowhere now. We all drive, we can get there, but as a kid, you 19, 20, 21 years old, you want to. This shit is pandemonium, like you bow wow or something. Like, we ain't know how to handle this shit. Like, we ain't know how to handle it. As far as the slowdown, it declined a little bit, but I'm like, I'm one of them, like, man, so, it's certain motherfuckers that had the city by the balls. I'm one of them guys. Like, at one time I had the city by, it was like hot. It was meek and it, it might have been had and it was read over here. But I had the theme song. Like, I got the headshot theme song. When you think about headshot, you can say niggas got bars and verses. On name was the headshot theme song. Therefore, I had the city by the balls. So. We used to go to the mall that she used to be pandemonium. So I still go places, man, listen. My man off camera, he can contest this. We was just out Puerto Rico a couple years ago. We out Puerto Rico. My man like, yo, ain't you the... I said, what the fuck? This shit... And this this only... This a couple years ago. So this ain't the era. This passed away. Like, I'm, my face is like still... Like still one of them balls, man. Like, I'm, it ain't like it was, but you know. Like when I say was somebody, because the city forgot. It's our, it's our job to remind them. Give them a reminder. Yeah. So for people who want to holler at you, want to connect with you, do some work with you, let I me mean, plug all your info, let them know how they can get at you and all that. Ain't doing none of that. Holler at show. Work <laughs> 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 skinny jeans, dresses, colorful hair, and y'all can go. I'm like 
Come on.